Corden. My name is the Enlightened Peacock, aka Jasmine. This is my Enlightenment Nest, and you are joining me for my podcast, Birds of a Feather. All right, so today's topic that I have chosen to start with for my first episode, I have probably recorded two or three different podcast episodes thinking they were going to be my first, and then when I went to edit them, I was not happy with my subject choice for the first episode, so I've changed it multiple times, Um, and this one came to me in my sleep last night, so let's see if this one makes the cut. So it's kind of a two-part recording. It's a two-part podcast. Uh, The first one, I dive into energy, and I've recorded this one before, um, but it was not of the quality that I had hoped for, so I scrapped it. So um, I'm going to go into it with a different mindset this time, and then the one that will follow it is going to be about self-love. And um, self-love is something that I am very much working on for myself right now. So in order for me to explain self-love to you a little bit easier, I'm going to first delve into energy work because energy is something that is in everything around us and attaches to us and others. And it's something that everybody should understand how it works because it plays a huge, huge part in how our lives um, around us unfold. And it also plays a huge part in my Reiki business as well because Reiki is energy work. So uh, we're gonna dive into that. Excuse me, I have a little bit of a cough still. Um, So the idea of energy is everything has energy, be it living or inanimate objects. You can transfer energy into things. Um, Anything that you touch, your energy goes into. Um, Anything that if you have something in your house that many people have touched, it likely has a little of all their energies into it. And not all energy is good. Not all energy is bad. Um, Everybody's energy is different. And your energy changes all the time. we are very energetic beings. We have so much energy flowing through our bodies. And if you understand the chakra system at all, the chakra system is like gateways through our body that filter, doesn't filter, but it like, it's like the, the energy goes through your body in a certain course. And there are major, think of them as toll booths, I guess. If you're on a highway or traveling a major highway and you have toll booths along the way that you have to hit and pay a toll to get through. When your energy circulates through your body, there are chakras in your body that are like toll booths that your energy has to flow through those certain points and those are like checkpoints in your body. And each of those checkpoints is a certain function. Um, the seven major ones serve as your seven major function and chakras that play a huge role in your body and how it works and if you have an issue with one of those chakra points there will be some sort of physical ailment mental ailment Um, and I'm not going to go into the chakra system completely today because I'm saving that topic for a later episode with a co-host to drop in and um, help me with but uh, basically the energy runs through your body and it can be, um, it can have blockages and cause ailments. Um, and then picture yourself with a glowing aura around you. Now, this is just an example. I'm not saying this is exactly what it looks like because I personally cannot see them yet. Um, but some people can see auras and energy and I can feel people's energy and I can feel get a sense of what their energy contains, whether it be grief or anger or sadness or um, happiness or if there's something just dark and dreary about it. Um, But I can usually tell um, when I first meet a person whether I like their energy or not. And if I no longer feel feel people that I normally hang out with have the energy that's compatible with my own, then I will just walk away from that um, 
friendship or a relationship, not like, I don't want to be friends with you no more, just I don't want to spend a bulk of my time with you anymore because our energy is no longer compatible. Some people can see these energies and auras. And so for an example, the way energy transfer works, imagine that you have this big bubble of energy around you. Let's say that your energy is pink, happy, loving, pink energy. We love pink energy. So let's just say that you are in a relationship and your partner's relationship, their energy is red. Red is passion and lustful and um, that is your relationship and that is their energy. So picture when you're with this person, your energies meld together. So your pink energy that's around you now has some red swirling in with it and the longer you spend time with this person, the longer more energy transfer is going to happen. So not only is your pink and red energy merging together in your body, it's also merging in their body. So they're getting some of your nice love and pink energy as well. Let's say that that relationship ends, whether it be on bad terms or good terms, it doesn't matter. And you go your separate ways. Even if you go your separate ways and you never speak to each other again, you still have each other's energy attached to you. And unless you go through a process to release your energy, their energy that you're holding on to, and call back your own, you will continue to carry that energy with you. So let's say you have many relationships over the next several years. We'll just throw a number out there, 10. Let's say you have 10 relationships over the next several years. None, they don't have to be long. They could just be a couple of dates. Nah, not my type. Next, Tinder. Oh, he looks interesting. Let's go on a date. No, didn't like him either. Next. So let's just say you're out there dating. Each one of these individuals that you are having contact with, you're exchanging energy with them. Even if it's a small amount, you're still exchanging energy with them. So your beautiful pink aura is slowly taking in all these different colored energies and it's starting to look like a marbled, swirled artwork aura around you. So let's say you've got a bad relationship with a parent um, and their energy is just a very dark, dreary, grayish, murky color. And all your life you've struggled with that relationship with that person because every time you're with them, you just feel ugh, like you feel that energy and it just brings you down. But they're your parent. You have to keep going with that relationship, right? Because you got to respect your parents. They brought you into this world. So you try and you struggle and you try. And eventually you've just had enough. You're just like, I'm sorry, mom or dad, but as much as I want you in my life, this is not healthy for me. This is not good for me. And until something changes, we have to go with different ways. So you part with that relationship. Maybe temporarily, maybe permanently. Time will tell. But that dreary, murky color is still there. It's lingering there. It's likely with your root chakra because that's where your tribe chakra is and that's where that energy originates from, your tribal energy. So it's likely in your root chakra lingering down there. So you've brought in all these different energies from all these different people that you've had relationships with. If you've got friends that you've cut ties with because of some incident that's happened, that energy is still lingering with you. If you go out and do your errands for the day, every person you come in contact with along the way imprints their energy on you because your energy field is not just in your body. Your energy field extends feet outside your body, multiple feet outside your body. Everybody's different. Some auras, energy fields are very close to them and they only extend maybe a foot or two. Some people extend their energy field out many feet beyond their body. Um, so that asshole that cuts you off in the car lane, in the path to the turning lane, like cut you off, flip you off, like, uh, yep, this I'm taking off in front of you. That energy, even though it's not right there with you, it's still close enough. That energy can still attach to you. The checkout lady at your checkout counter, their energy is attaching to you. 
the gentleman that gets you your seafood at the seafood counter, their energy is going to attach to you, not only to you, but the food that they're giving you. That lady at the checkout counter touches every one of your items. That energy, no matter what it is, whether it be good energy if she's in a good mood or negative energy if she's had a rough day, most people that work in the customer service industry, though, by the end of their shift, they've just fucking had it with you guys. And they're like, nope, I'm done messing with all you assholes. And they're usually in a pretty dreary mood by the end of their shift. Been there, done that. So I can guarantee the energy being imprinted onto all of your product products going through that checkout line, probably not the greatest energy. The fast food restaurant where you stop and grab a burger to eat on the way home. You think those people working on that grow line at McDonald's are in a good mood to be there? Like they think they want to be there at that point in their life? Probably not. That energy is getting imprinted on your food and you aren't consuming that food and that energy is going right into your body. So think of all the people you've come in contact over the course of just one day alone and all that energy is inside of you. Now imagine you've never done anything to release that energy and call your own back. Because remember, you're imprinting on them too. They're taking a little bit of your energy too. Why do you think people that spend a lot of time around other people are so drained and exhausted by the end of the day? It's because some bits of their energy are being pulled from them. So you have this beautiful pink aura and all these other energies are coming into it and all of your pink energy is going out to them too. You don't have much of your own energy left because you have to replenish that energy. You can replenish your energy. It takes time though. And wouldn't it just be easier if you could call all that energy back to you at the end of each day and be like, okay, I want it back. I need it back. I need my energy back. I am dead right now because I've given all my energy to everybody else today. I need it back. You can, you can do that. But just imagine you've never done that. You've never called your energy back. You've never released the energy that's been held inside of you because no matter how little it is, it can still be held on there for a very long time. And the more impactful the person and the incident is that their energy attached to you, the more that it's going to sit there and fester, especially if it's not a good energy. So your pink is very dreary. It's got all these other colors mixed in. There's not much pink left. If you do this day and day and day again, it gets to be a mundane tiresome lifestyle to live. Not just people carry energy, things carry energy too. People can have an object in their possession and have a very deep place, dark place in their heart at the moment that they have it. Say you got a crystal that belonged to someone else first. Person that had the crystal before you could have cherished that thing through a dark time in their life and they were just in a very dark place where they didn't want to live, they didn't want to be on this planet, they didn't find any happiness in their life, and all that energy transferred into that crystal. And crystals hold a lot of energy. And then they hand it off to you, or you get it at a yard sale, or you buy it at a thrift shop or a flea market. That energy is stored in that crystal. And it doesn't have to be a crystal, it can be anything. It could be a journal. Um, it could be a piece of clothing they wore through a dark time in their life that they put on the yard sale. It could be anything somebody had in their possession when they went through a dark time. And then you get that object. That energy is still in there and you are now possessing it and, and it's getting incorporated into your energy too. So this is why um, people sage and Palo Santo, their house, Native Americans and many, many places throughout the world believe in saging on a very regular basis because energy transference is a huge thing. If someone comes into your house to visit, their energy comes into your house with them and it does not leave until you sage that house. If you don't practice saging or palo santoin, you can also just walk around your house and the best way to do it, because this is what I was taught, and I'm not sure how much truth there is to it, but I've done it because it makes sense to me. Um, it has to have a way to escape your home. So when people sage or bless homes, 
um, a lot of times they leave a window or a door cracked open because, and they start at that point in the house and they go around the entire inside perimeter of the house and end where they started at the opened door or window. And the theory is that the negative energy that you are cleansing from your house will go out that opening because it needs a way to escape your house. Um, and what it does is it goes back into, it will go back to the person or it'll go back to the earth and be recycled. Um, so you can sage. I go around my house with sage and I sage the house. And then um, if you don't sage or you don't possess sage or you don't believe in sage or you don't like the smell of sage, Palo Santo is another great option. My husband prefers Palo Santo over sage. He's not a great fan, a huge fan of the scent of sage. Um, so you, yes, cleanse in your home of negative energy. That's a very important step. So food, food, energy transference into food is a huge thing and it's almost impossible to um, avoid unless you are a homegrown farmer that grows all their own food and it eats only stuff that they make themselves and no one else's hands ever touch anything that you put in your body. There's no way to avoid energy from other humans or animals or plants to get into you. So... I mentioned if you go to fast food and the line cook that's making your burger, their energy is transferring into your food. So it's kind of part of the reason I no longer eat takeout. One, the food's horrible anyway. But two, the people handling are usually not in the greatest of moods and that energy goes into the food as well. Um, which is why most people feel like crap after they eat takeout. So um, the same thing with like restaurants, sit down to eat restaurants. It might be a nice mom pop kind of restaurant and the food might not be as yuck, it might be better quality food, but you still have to take into account that the people making the food and the people who handled the food before they got it, all their energy is in that food still. So there is a way to kind of counteract this because like I said, it's unavoidable. You're gonna wanna re eat out eventually. And even if you don't, you have to take into account every single person who's come in contact with anything that you eat from the time it's grown or harvested or butchered to the time that it gets to your table. It, it, that energy transferred is in there. So, um, and the animal's energy as well if you're eating animal products. So let's, for example, go with the dairy industry. Now, unless you are going to a farm or buying your milk from a known place who is humane and lets their cows live a happy, healthy life for the most part, most dairy industries have a very cruel system in place. Now, you can only get milk from a cow when they've given birth to a baby because the milk production doesn't come into effect until the body of the cow like with humans it's like oh you've had a baby time to produce milk to feed that baby so what they do is they impregnate the female cow which a lot of the times is done artificially which is kind of rude to begin with like here cow make a baby whether you like it or not so one the first thing they do is basically violate the cow to make it get pregnant. Already horrible energy in that practice alone. Then they, as soon as the baby is born, they remove the calf from the cow and send it off to be made into veal. Horrible energy in the veal, you can imagine. And again, more horrible energy into the milk because the mom just lost her baby, just tore that baby right away from the mama cow. And then, most farms, not all, but most farms, dairy farms anyway, stick the cow in this tiny little stall that isn't even room to turn around, and they're forced to stay in that little stall for the rest of their lives. They don't get to go graze in the fields. They don't get to turn around and lay down in a comfortable position. They're in this tiny stall that's only big enough to stand or lay down. And they're hooked up to a machine that milks them on a regular basis. And they're just kept there until they no longer produce milk. And then they're off to the slaughter. That is how milk is created. And then you take that milk and you make the cheese products and all the other dairy byproducts. All that energy, that horrible negative energy is in that food, is in that milk, is in that cheese. 
And then if they use the meat from the cow afterwards to be put into meat products, it's in that too. And it's the same thing with the beef industry. They do the same thing, minus the baby cow production, obviously. Chicken industry, whether it's laying chickens for eggs or if it's chicken for poultry products, they take these chickens and stick them in the tiniest little cages where they don't even have room to stand up and move around. And they're forced to live in these tiny little confined cages injected with growth hormones to make them bigger, plumper, fatter, juicier for our consumption and grow quicker so they don't have to wait as long for them to plump up and kill them. And antibiotics that are both injected into them directly and put into their food that they eat, all of that energy is going into that food and that chemical, like the chemicals for the growth hormones and the antibiotics, you're eating those chemicals that's going into the meat. All that energy is transferred into the meat. So not only are you consuming all the energy that is put into the meat during the process of creating the animals and plumping them up and getting them ready for butcher, but then you're also getting the energy of any hands that handle that. The butcher, the people that package the meat, people that ship the meat, the people that put the meat on the shelves at the market, Every person that touches that package of meat from the time it leaves the farm until it gets to your table, their energy's in there too. So um, I think that's why a lot of people go vegan nowadays is because it's a lot safer to eat produce. There's not um, murder (laughs) involved. There's not bad energy transfer as much involved. I think people are probably a lot safer eating plants and plant-based diets. Um, I'm not like vegan myself. I love my meat. I do try to make sure all my meat is sourced from places that don't use antibiotics, don't use growth hormones, um, free range only, um, and grass fed because I feel like they should have the grass. They should be able to eat the grass. That's what it, that's what their diet should consist of. Um, it's expensive. And it sucks because I can only buy a quarter of what I'd normally buy for meat when I buy that kind. But I know the energy in that meat is going to be way better than the energy in standard meat. Um, But the problem nowadays is you don't know if the packaging is lying or not. Because humans are corrupt and they'll put whatever they think you want to see. For all I know, that that meat that says it's organic, antibiotic-free, free-ranged, no growth hormones, it could be coming from the exact same farm, same cows as all the rest of them, and they just put different materials on half their packages to sell it for more money. I have no clue. I have, they don't, they, the, the USDA Drug Administration, like, they don't, they don't really oversee those guidelines thoroughly to make sure that they're following what they say they're following. So it's hard to know. So, In this scenario, when you're eating food, and there's probably God knows how much energy in there that you don't want to be consuming, you can Reiki your food. And you don't have to know how to do Reiki to Reiki your food. I'm going to walk you through it. So Reiki is energy manipulation. So your food, all you have to do, all I do, before... I eat my food. And everybody can do this differently. Whatever comes to you and feels natural to you, do it. Um, I just put my hands over my food. You can do it to drinks. You can do it to water. You can do it to food. Whatever. You can reiki anything. You can reiki your plant. Is your house plant dying? Go reiki it. So you put your hands over whatever it is you're trying to reiki, your food, your water, whatever. Sorry, I just realized you can't see my hands down there. (laughs) So you put it over your food. Now, I visualize a white light coming down through the top of my head, going out through my hands and into my food. So I'm envisioning this white light coming down from the universe, going out my hands, and I visualize this entire white aura encompassing my entirety of my food. And it just radiates into my food. This is purifying it. This is removing all negative energy that I don't want to consume that is in my food. And it is making it better for me to eat. And you can do this to anything that you eat and drink. And it will make the stuff, the energy, the, the, the murkiness of the food, the energy transference of the food, 
go away. So you're eating its better, purer form. So we've covered food and we've covered your home. So, and your car, you can do the, the sage into your car too, which I never think to do, but I probably should. Um, crystals, I mentioned, hold a lot of energy. If you're a crystal collector like myself, make sure any crystals that you bring into your home, you sage them or purify them in some way. So that you were cleansing, cleansing, so you're cleansing all energies from your crystals. Um, Cause like I said, anybody that touches them along the way, that energy is going into your crystal. So there are multiple ways that you can cleanse your crystals. Sage is just one of them. That's the quicker one that I do. Um, but there are better ways to do it. Um, sage is just the fastest for me. Um, especially when you buy them in larger quantities. Um, you can cleanse in water, but not all crystals can be submerged in water. So um, only use water if you know they're safe to put into water. Um, a lot of crystals will dissolve or deteriorate in water. Um, you can bury them in the earth, um, even if you just got like a big toad or pot of dirt and bring that into your home and put them in that. It doesn't have to be like outside, outside. Um, and then sun, charges and cleanses and moonlight charges and cleanses so if you put them on a windowsill or on a shelf where the light or moon shines in and it hits them right now my crystals are currently on an, most of not all of them but most of my crystals are on an altar in my shed right beside me right now and the sun shines in through the window on my crystals every single day so every single day they're getting cleansed and charged and then when the moon comes through at night they're getting cleansed and charged as well. So they are at a good location at the moment. Um, but not everybody has that luxury of having a window that's open access to the sun and the moon all the time. So um, uh, salt is another great way to purify it. If you take a bowl of salt and you put the crystal down into the salt and let it sit there overnight, um, that's a great way to do it. That's what I used to do before I started using the sage. Um, and then you want to dispose of the salt. I usually chuck it out the next day and get fresh salt for each um, time I do a crystal. So, and you can do multiple crystals in one container of salt. It doesn't have to be like one per batch of salt. So, um, so those are all great ways to cleanse your crystals before you add them to your collection and spread the energy around that's in them. Um, so, um, on the topic of crystals, Crystals have their own natural energy that comes with them, and that you won't be able to remove completely. That is, and that's a good thing. And crystals each have their own unique energies to them that help you in certain ways and are good for certain chakra points or certain ailments. So I can do a whole different podcast on crystals and which ones are good for what things, um, but I'll go over a couple of brief ways for you to use them in your daily use to help with the energy usage of them. Um, so keep in palm stones or small tumbled stones or jewelry made out of crystals is a good way to keep them on you at all times. Keep them in your pocket, on your purse. If you don't have pockets, some people will have like a medicine pouch. They'll put them in around their neck. Um, keep. I have some that hang in my rear view mirror. I have them that I will keep palm stones in my pockets sometimes if I'm wearing pockets. I usually have bracelets or necklace on most of the time. I did not put any on this morning because I'm doing a Reiki session in a little bit and I take them off for that. Um, keeping larger pieces in your home helps keep the energy in your home. Um, they come in all different shapes and cuts and sizes um, and no one type is better than another they're just different shapes and cuts might project the energy in different ways and one of the good ones to remember is clear quartz because clear quartz is a amplifier and any crystals you stick near a clear quartz will that crystal will amplify their energy um, and then they're also like the universal crystal that's great for everything is the clear quartz one Crystals. Um, <clears throat> another thing that you can do with them, which I've just started doing recently, and I think I'm going to start recording and journaling my experiences and then comparing and see if there's a, a difference in the different nights. But I sleep with a crystal under my pillow right now. And I've heard of doing this before, but I've never practiced it until now. 
you stick certain crystals under your pillow when you sleep at night and they'll have certain effects. So there are certain ones that will give you more lucid dreams. There are certain ones that are more common and give you more peaceful dreams, like amethyst. Um, there are ones that help you contact your spirit guides in your sleep. There's just so many different ones and they all do different things. There's ground in ones that will help ground you in your sleep. Uh, there are ones that help you contact your higher self in your sleep. And if you don't know who your higher self is, that's a whole nother video. <laughs> um, currently, I am sleeping with a Celestite underneath my pillow. A Celestite is a pretty light blue crystal. And when I first started getting crystals, that was one of the first ones I bought. And the reason I picked it was because the person who sold it to me, explained that celestite is used for uh, contact with loved ones past or spirit guides or angels or whatever you want to call them. And of course, I lost my child recently. So I was like, oh, well, maybe if I have this, I'll be able to speak to her again. So I got it for that reason. Um, I now sleep with it under my pillow. I've been sleeping with it under my pillow for this last week. And I will say my dreams have been much more vivid. I remember them easier when I wake up. A lot of the times when I dream, things are kind of blurry. Like I can see what I'm focusing on, but everything else around me is very blurry. Like I know I'm talking to people, but I can't see the details in their faces. Sometimes I don't know who they are. Sometimes they don't look familiar to me, but they're so blurry and undefined that I can't really place them even if I wanted to. When I slept with this under my pillow for the last week, the people in my dreams, their faces are clearer. The details in my dreams of the things around me are clearer. And I can see things in the distance, like not just right in front of me. Like I can see off in the distance, the details. Um, so I have noticed that since I started sleeping with that under my pillow. I've also dreamt about my daughter multiple nights this week. So maybe I am contacting her. Who knows? Um, but yeah, like I'm going to start journaling each night what I sleep with under my pillow and get journal the dream and see what happens and see if there's a correlation between the dreams I have with certain crystals and yeah I think it'll be a fun uh podcast project to do so uh so yeah crystals I love them I love using them I love that I keep discovering new ways to use them you can put them in your water and combine the energy from the crystals into your water the tourmaline is a really good one to put into your water. Um, there are water bottles out there that will have a cubby in the bottom where you can put crystals in and in, uh, infuse the energy of the crystals into your water. Um, but if you're safe about it, you can just take like a jug of water, clean the crystals first, and make sure that their water, the crystals won't destroy them because certain crystals can be destroyed by water. But clean them thoroughly, cleanse them, charge them, Put them in the water and leave them overnight and remove them before you drink it because you could choke on it um, and it'll infuse your water. So, um, protection, tourmaline is great for protection. Black tourmaline, if you're in Maine like me, is a natural thing that you can find in our state. Um, so black tourmaline, put it around the inside or outside or both of your house because it protects and keeps negative energy out. So I have tourmaline on a lot of my windowsills around my house. And I have some in my garden outside my shed and I have them above the doors and I love tourmaline. It's a great protectant um, for your home. Okay, so we're going to do the last thing, which is yourself. And yourself is the most important because yourself holds this energy more than anything. So we're going, I'm going to walk you through a very short guided meditation. You can make this longer and do this again on your own when you have more time to do a more thorough one. I will say if you're going to cut multiple cords and release multiple energies at once, you want to prepare yourself mentally. You might experience the feeling of loss, grief, emptiness, sadness, because these energies have been into your in your body for such a long time. Even if they're ones you don't want, even if they're ones you don't realize are there, your body knows you're, that they are there and your subconscious knows that they are there. And you are cutting something from your body, whether it's wanted or not, it's been there for a very long time. 
And your body is going to grieve. Your body is going to feel loss and sadness because it's letting a piece of what they thought it was go. And basically what you are doing is you are taking all the things that have attached to you over the course of your entire life up until now and you're cutting them loose and you're saying, you, this energy that is in me was not a good energy. It has made me be a person I don't want to be. Um, for example, I will use a personal experience because I love sharing my personal experiences with you guys. If you have an energy in you that makes you feel like you need constant approval, like you need constant confirmation that you're doing things right or well, if you strive for people's approval and you do things above and beyond all the time, whether it be planning parties, hosting gatherings, cleaning and decorating your own home and space, taking care of your family. If you're constantly looking for others to look at what you are doing or what you've done and give you compliments and confirmation that you're doing a great job, that means there is something that happened in the past in your life that caused you to feel unworthy and make you feel you need to do better. Whether it be you didn't get the approval you need from your parents um, that's why they always say to tell your children that they're doing a good job even when it's not their best because you want to make sure they know even though it's not their best, they're still doing a good job. They put the effort in and that's what matters. If your parents never did that for you, like mine, then you're always striving for someone to tell you you're, they're proud of you because you didn't get that enough as a kid. So that energy is attached to you. So you want to let it go because that's causing you to constantly look for approval and from other people. And sometimes it might not be from people that you want to get it from. The only person's approval that you need is your own. That's part of self-love. We will talk about that next time. So just close your eyes and envision yourself with this white aura over your whole body. Now picture these white tendrils is the best way I can describe, like little tentacles coming out. They're like white lights. Picture them coming out from wherever suits you. For me, it depends on what I'm releasing as to where it's attached to. But Picture uh, one of them coming out of your body at whatever point feels right. And that energy cord coming out of you is attached to something or someone in your life that you no longer want that energy attached to you. So imagine in your mind, whatever it is, whether it's an ex, a former friend, that person that flipped you off in the checkout aisle yesterday, <laughs> Whatever energy comes to mind first that you want to let go, that you do not want in you anymore. And just picture that tendril or cord or whatever you want to call it coming out of your body and floating back to wherever it came from. And you can say this out loud or you can think it in your head. And as always, I always say, saying it out loud is more powerful. Using your voice is powerful. Words are spells. Words have power behind them. So say it out loud or in your head. 
This energy no longer serves me. I release you back. I call back all my energy that is attached to where it came from. I want it back. And you just watch the cord go. Now you can do this for every single energy in your body that you no longer want. There might be ones in there you don't even know that you have. But I would start with the major ones that come to mind first. You can even make a list. You can make a list and do this one thing at a time, little by little, and do it over time. Or you can just do it all at once. Um, I would recommend doing it little by little. I personally just did it all at once recently, and it's a lot mentally to take. I'm still processing it. Um, and it sometimes tries to come back. Um, and it takes a lot of living in the moment and thoroughly thinking things through before you say or do anything. Um, but it also makes you calmer. Because a lot of things that cause you to lash out and react in a heated manner or off the cusp are from previous traumas that have programmed us to react that way. And a lot of the times we were trained, our body was trained to respond that way out of a defense mechanism because we felt attacked at the time and then it just kind of stuck with us and we've done it ever since. Um, we need to basically retrain our bodies all over again, that we are no longer in danger. We no longer need to respond this way to the people around us because they're not meaning us harm most of the time. If they are, get out. <laughs> um, so yeah, just do that a little by little. Make a list. And when you get done with the list of the major ones that you can think of, do one thorough sweep at the end and clear the rest away and just watch the rest of those ten those cords be cut and released back into the world and say, I just release all energy that has clung to me, that no longer serves me, that I do not want in me anymore. I release it all back to wherever it came from and I call all of my energy back to me that has ever left me and attached to someone or something else. I call it all back to me. I want all my energy back because I'm exhausted and I need my energy back. And you will feel lighter, sometimes emptier, especially if you do a lot at once like I did you will sometimes feel like you just watched your entire world crumble around you and you have to build it all back up again because it had been built by everybody else in your life and not by you. You let it all go and you are rebuilding your walls in your form and your desire, not everybody else's. So I hope that helps some people. Um, like I said, I just did this recently and um, I did it because I had a lot of, uh, I had an ego death moment where I un, <laughs> I don't want to say unwillingly because I kind of asked for it. And funny, funny enough, when it happened to me, my spirit guides told me, hey, you asked for this and here you got it. Um, but I had a moment where I had all of my, um, all everything that I have ever done in my life that was not a good thing. Any time I was mean, any time I was rude, any time I was selfish, any time I was jealous, any time I acted out of anger, jealousy, fear, it all came to me and it made me realize that I've been living in my ego and in my fear and in my judgment and anger my whole life for so many different things that have caused trauma that I didn't really realize did as much damage as it did. But I was my own judge. Judgment day came and I was my own judge. I am. 
those of you who know that saying will understand, I am. I am my own judge. And I judged myself harshly. And I was in tears for quite a while because I didn't know what to do with all of it. Because I basically been hit in the face with, you're not as great of a person as you thought you were. And it hurt a lot. Because I know even though I did all those things out of fear and anger and jealousy and uh, didn't mean harm, I still did harm. And I knew deep down that wasn't who I was. That's just what I'd been conditioned to be over the years. And I could change. I could start over. I could be new. I could let it all go and rebuild who I am. So I did. The next day, I did a cord cutting ceremony. I let it all go at once. I was not going to pussyfoot around it and do it gradually. I was like, I already dove in head first. I might as well swim deeper. So I cut them all at once. I said, I let it all go. Every single bit of it. I did a couple individual that were big ones, like big relationships in my life. I let a few of them go individually, but then I just did the rest all at once. I was like, let it all go. I'm done. I'm starting over. Let it all go. Bring all my energy back. Release anything that's not mine. I'm done. And afterwards, I just, I cried for so long. I cried because I felt empty and blank and undefined, I guess is the best way to say it. Because what I had lived up until that point was what everybody else had conditioned me to be. And that's not who I was anymore. It was all gone. So I have to re-find myself, re-figure out what makes Jasmine happy. What, what do I need in my life to feel fulfilled? And this is where the self-love comes in because any of us who do not truly feel happiness and fulfillment and strength and love in here for ourselves. If we can't be happy alone, we will never be happy in a relationship with anybody, whether it be platonic or romantic or anything else. You have to truly feel the love, the trust, the honor, and the gratitude in here for yourself in order for your relationships in your life to work because anything you feel towards yourself inside is going to be projected into every relationship into your life whether you realize it or not. I have projected my feelings towards myself at everybody around me not realizing it until now. So self-love is where you start after you cord cut because you have to fill your own cup, as a good friend told me recently. Fill your own cup first. I've heard that saying many times. You have to fill your own cup before you can help others fill theirs because you can't pour from an empty cup. Same concept. Fill your own cup and don't fill it with others. If you're filling your cup by being around other people or by having things given to you or by going to certain places that hold certain energies or memories from the past with other people, that is filling your cup with someone else's cup. You need to learn to fill your own cup yourself without taking from others' cups in the process. Because if you can't fill your cup yourself without other people's help, again, you cannot have truly healthy relationships with anybody else around you. Okay, guys. I'm going to close out this podcast for the day. Um... I will do my next one on self-love very, very shortly. Um, 
And then hopefully I'll be recording one with Winter, my co-pilot, <laughs> soon. Uh, th life has gotten in the way, as you can tell. <laughs> thank you for joining me, and thank you for joining Birds of a Feather. Again, I am Enlightened Peacock, and this is my Enlightenment Nest, and this has been Birds of a Feather. I hope to see you next time, or I hope you join me next time. Namaste. Love and light all.